Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. And uh, this is the hour of restoration. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, so this is a, a day that God has made. Uh, we are so glad that uh, we have everybody. Uh, so we have Reverend Holmes and uh, uh, Reverend I, Reverend Luck, and uh, Reverend Gabriel, and uh, Reverend Holmes. I'm hopeful uh, uh, many will join soon. Okay, let me start uh, with a prayer. Uh, good afternoon, Heavenly Father. Uh, we are so uh, grateful. Grateful for your blessing and for your grace upon our life, each one of us. Also, the, we are grateful for uh, being here together uh, beyond the, our background, denominations, or nationalities or races. We are all come together under your name. And under uh, only Father, we know. Only parent we know. Heavenly Father, uh, please uh, guide us, give us the, your word uh, through our speaker, and uh, please uh, give us the uh, clear guidance in our life so that we can live the life that our Lord Jesus Christ lived 2,000 years ago. Heavenly Father, we are each, we, each one of us. Uh, a small uh, Christ and a sm small Messiah that as we uh, try to emulate the word of Jesus in our life. I pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so our restoration is uh, uh, the program that uh, was sponsored by American Clergy Leadership Conference and the Divine Power Ministry of Reverend Gabriel. So let me go over briefly the short, small announcement, short announcement. So our restoration have a, a monthly theme and this month uh, we have a theme is called uh, Transparent uh, Christian Living. And uh, we have a foundation scripture, Romans 13, 11 to 14. And also uh, another one is Second uh, Corinthians 4 and 1 to 2. So each week we have uh, uh, speakers, um, pastors, ministers uh, will uh, really uh, explore the deeper uh, meaning and understanding, also the application of those words in our life so that we are all can benefit. Uh, so, uh, so this is the restoration, time of restoration. Our understanding of restoration is according to Acts 3.21. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. So God is the God of restoration, author of restoration. Restoration means the act or process of returning something to its original condition. So God created everything, heaven and the earth and all humankind. And uh, Genesis 3.24, uh, in the beginning, in the Genesis, uh, so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of garden of uh, garden of Eden cherubims and the flaming sword which turned every uh, every way to keep the way of the tree of life if there is no fall there is no need for the restoration but we we lost the original uh, place and the uh, original condition uh, so the uh, God have to uh, block the way uh, to the tree of life. But this tree of life in the Garden of Eden will be restored at the end. Uh, I am the Alpha and Omega, 
the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city of the gates. That Christ, our Lord Jesus, must come again to restore everything and uh, including the pathway for the tree of life. Our eternal life. And the Roman 12 too, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. A restoration will never take place in the vacuum, but with restoration can only take place through the word, the word of God that can transform us and the renewing our mind. So uh, the, the announcement that just the current event and today we had a, uh, a wonderful occasion, the American Clergy Leadership Conference, uh, Westchester Rockland uh, sponsored and helped the a reverend Poro of the uh, Church of God. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Ebenezer, Ebenezer Church of God in Yonkos, uh, to hold the marriage rededication and the blessing. And uh, all the congregations and the many couples, and the, of course, the head pastors and uh, uh, church leaders receive the marriage blessing, which is a rededication of the marriage to really bring their uh, marriage to the uh, original uh, standard of God, which is in Genesis and uh, uh, the God blessed man and woman and be fruitful, multiply, have dominion over all creations. So that this is uh, today's event and the uh, next uh, month, uh, next week, our restoration, we, feach, we will feature uh, Minister Sonia Martin. Uh, she will deliver the message next week. And uh, uh, this is uh, just happened, effective stewardship uh, just uh, ended today, uh, Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. And uh, Reverend Gabriel uh, was the main speaker. And we all experienced uh, amazing power of the word of God. And uh, then uh, this is a, a day that we are waiting for. Divine Power Ministry International presents the prayer summit, the future of the church. Uh, we have a featured speaker. Uh, main speaker is the uh, Bishop Roger McKenzie and also the Reverend Holmes. Uh, and also that we have a prayer uh, reigns uh, by the evangelist Sonia Martin and also, of course, the Reverend uh, Gabriel. Uh, this is going to be an amazing event for the, all the pastors and ministers and evangelists, uh, all uh, uh, leaders, leadership of the church uh, who come together to seek the uh, uh, in, inspiration about the future of the church uh, through the prayer. So Saturday, uh, June 17 is the next Saturday, 10 a.m. at the St. Thomas A.M.E. Zion Church, uh, 54 West Street, Harvest Row, and New York. Uh, please uh, call us or contact us and uh, so that uh, you can be registered and please come. On, on time at 10 a.m. Okay, that is the all uh, announcement I have. So let's begin the, our restoration. Okay, so we want to ask uh, hmm. well, Reverend Holmes, uh, could you uh, pray and uh, open up uh, our restoration prepares us for the uh, world we're going to receive heaven homes. Let us pray. 
Most gracious God, we come before you this afternoon. Thank you again for your mercy, for your grace that knows no limits or any, or any bounds. We pray that we are gathered together today under this canopy of love, that your light would shine down upon us, that anointing would pull the fresh upon each of us who are here. We pray for the speaker for this afternoon, and you would anoint him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, who hide him behind the cross where thou hast died. Let his words be words of power and authority coming from the right from the throne of God. Give us, your people, ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to comprehend. Then bend our will to your will, God, and we might do your work while we still have breath running through our veins. Have mercy, God, upon us today on this endeavor that we are undertaking, that we will leave here fruitful for having heard and shared in your word. Be merciful to us again is my plea. In Christ's name we pray, and we say amen and amen and amen. Sorry, I, I was muted. Uh, thank you very much, Reverend Holmes. So let's uh, begin uh, uh, today's main uh, message uh, by the, our own Edward uh, Edna, Reverend <laughs> Edna uh, Pierre Louis. Uh, he is a uh, uh, current New York uh, district, the American Clergy Leadership Conference uh, coordinator. So, Reverend Edna, floor is yours. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Brother David. Uh, beautiful wife standing right there behind you. Thank you. Uh, I thank all my fellow pastors, my brothers and sisters. I'm especially happy to see Brother Phil, Phil High. He was at uh, service today and uh, at uh, 43rd Street, and I told him about the hour of restoration. He told me, send send me the uh, the uh, link and sure enough he followed up and there he is uh, thank, you. thank you brother phil uh brother phil is an expert in uh mental health issues issues having to do with uh mental health and he's also he comes out of the uh the medical profession uh, he was, uh, for many, many years, uh, an emergency medical technician. So we're grateful. I'm grateful to see uh, Reverend Galvan, uh, Bishop Wakas, ever, ever present all the way from uh, Pakistan. My goodness, you know, you're an amazing man. Angela's blessing, uh, certainly uh, Reverend Gabriel, uh, Brother Locke McCallman, Reverend Holmes, thank you for your prayer. And I see Galaxy, I, that may be coming out of uh, of uh, Nigeria. I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, thank you for your presence. Okay, so, you know, uh, thank you again. Uh, the topic uh, of discussion this month is transparent Christian living. I'm grateful for uh, Reverend Gabriel's uh, presentation last week, he laid a very good uh, scriptural foundation for us to understand uh, the, that, 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 that high quality of living that is required of, of us as, uh, as Christians, as uh, children of the living God, as uh, disciples, you know, of, of Christ. Uh, what I wanted to do, what I want to do this week is uh, touch base on a, 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 a different aspect of the same topic. You know, I'm, I'm always inspired by uh, the, 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 the founder, actually, of uh, the ministry I follow, the ministry of uh, Father and Mother Moon. And one thing I've always loved about uh, Father Moon is that wherever he went, what whoever he was speaking with, whether he was speaking to his disciples, whether he was speaking to uh, uh, an academic group, uh, a political group. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we attended a number of these banquets, but no matter who he was speaking to, be, be they scientists, he, he would always begin with the idea of purpose. 
why God created and flowing from that, why is it that this kind of living is essential as men and women who are following uh, the scriptures, as men and women who are seeking and, and struggling and sometimes enjoy uh, 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 living the Christian life. You know, it's important for us to, to, to grasp that. So what I'll do is I'll begin with the reading of the, uh, the text that are the theme of uh, the message. We begin first, of course, with uh, Romans 13, 11, uh, 11 to 14. And it reads, I'm reading the uh, New King James Version. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. If, uh, if you don't mind, uh, let me see if I have it prepared here. I believe I do. I'd like to read that same scripture from the uh, New International Version. It's, it's, it's not different, but, you know, again, depending on the, the, the era that you're born into, certain ways of using language can be easily or challengingly uh, 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 difficult to understand. So in that particular uh, reading and uh, in, uh, the New International Version, it reads as follows. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. So in this reading, the flesh is, is called the sinful nature. So, you know, Again, let us return to the, 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 the fundamental area of why would the Lord require this of us? For example, and when we enter into the words of Jesus Christ, he brings forth an understanding to us on how we're to live. You know, some of you might be very familiar with uh, the readings uh, and the Sermon on the Mount. I'm not going to read the entire sermon, but I won't even read the section, but I just kind of want to uh, uh, draw a, a point for your attention. When you enter the Sermon on the Mount and you go to, of course, it's in chapter five of uh, the, the uh, Gospel of Matthew, and you read from uh, 13. Chapter 5, verse 13 to 48, you know, Jesus is kind of guiding us into an understanding of a deeper standard of life, of spiritual life. And without getting into the specifics of it, one thing that keeps coming up again and again, as he says, it was said this, but I tell you that. It was said you can do this, but I tell you that. It was said you can have an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I tell you pray for 
the one who took your tooth. Pray for the one who gouged your eye. And he ends it with that statement. That's the last statement that uh, is uh, in that particular uh, chapter. Therefore, be ye therefore perfect as thy heavenly father is perfect. So right there, we get a sense of purpose that the, the intent of these teachings, the intent of these words is to bring us to a realm of life where we are truly in harmony with God, where we are truly in harmony with the teacher himself, Jesus Christ. But again, why? What is the purpose of this? In order for me to kind of share with you a sense of it, I'd like to bring uh, a few words from, again, the founder of our ministry, the Unification Ministry, Father and Mother Moon. I'd like, I, I, I'm going into a, a particular area that he talked about. Uh, the true human being that God created. In other words, why did God create human beings in the first place? What was, it, what was in it for God? Father Moon says this, why did God, the absolute being, create men and women? It was not for money, knowledge, or power. It was for love. The only way God can feel love is through his partners human beings. From this point of view, we can say that God is the father and human beings are his sons and daughters. This relationship is the axis. If God and human beings had been connected through this axis, the parental axis, the parental love axis, father, sons and daughters, parent, sons and daughters, they would have become one in love then absolutely nothing could sever this relationship. What do you think was God's purpose in creating human beings? Simply put, even though God is omniscient, knows everything, omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent, everywhere, he did not want to be alone. Hence, God created the cosmos as an environment for human beings. And on that foundation, he created human beings to be his partners of absolute love. Because God created human beings as his children, he wanted them as his object partners to be better and greater than he is. Now, that's an interesting statement. The creator wants his children to be better than him. Now, some of us might feel a little bit strange with words like that. But then why are you as a parent wanting your children to be better than you? Where did that desire, who put that desire in you? Certainly in, in truth and in fact, I don't know that I can ever be better than the one who made me. But that desire is a driving force to become better and better and better and better. And so, even in this world, don't people want their children to live better than they do? Become better than they are? This tradition of parents' love is a blessing that God bestowed on human beings. God's purpose of creation was to experience joy in seeing men and women, his children, grow to perfect themselves in spirit, blessing them in marriage and having them bear the fruit of true love, true life, and true lineage by multiplying true children, creating true families, and building and living in the eternal ideal kingdom of heaven. So if we take these words and we compare them, be ye perfect as thy heavenly Father is perfect, we begin to understand that there is a purpose in this transparent Christian living. The creator is looking for the beings who can share heart, who can share love in a way that nothing else that he created is capable of. God created the cosmos first. I mean, we, you know, I'm not 
teaching you anything you don't know. But, we, but if we use our reason, we understand that God made all of that so that what he originally had in mind would have a, 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 a kind of environment to, to live and to grow in. You know, man is not an afterthought. You know, God didn't create nature, the earth, plants, life, uh, dinosaur life, uh, all these other living beings. And then all of a sudden said, oh, you know, I, hmm, maybe I should create something better. <laughs> no, God intended something better from the beginning and created step-by-step -step an environment for them to come in for the purpose for the purpose of having a being who can share love with him as never before. So it's important that when we speak of the transparent Christian living, we don't just speak of it as an end in itself. The purpose of becoming such people, such men and women, is to bring the deepest experience of love and joy with our creator and with one another. The Lord taught us these things when he was on earth. You know, sometimes even as he walked about, he looked for certain qualities and people that would give us a hint on, you know, the, 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 the kind of direction that he was guiding us into. You know, I recall, for example, when Jesus, uh, some of you know, uh, when he uh, came across uh, Nathaniel, you know, what did he say about Nathaniel? What, 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 what statement did he make about him? <coughs> he clearly said that, you know, this is a man in whom there is no guile, no falsehood. He, 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 he could read something in the man's nature that was in line with heaven's standard, or at least seeking to achieve it. We can go even to uh, the scriptures prior to the coming of Jesus and find certain characters who, whom, whom God deeply cherished in spite of their, 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 uh, their mistakes, in spite of their shortcomings. You know, sometimes uh, it might be difficult for us to uh, be people who uh, uh, might, you know, compare our, our nature or our uh, standard with that of uh, Jesus Christ himself. Because we saw in him a, a perfection that is achievable, but we, we don't hear of situations that brought him into, you know, sinfulness repentance, so to speak, you know. But if we go back, who in scripture would we uh, 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 consider as somebody who is kind of like us, or at least some of us might, might really deal with, 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 with that, that fallen nature, but still God was able to penetrate in him. God's spirit was able to find something special about that person. Well, we might have different ideas, but in my mind, one of the people I find who is uh, like that was uh, King David. King David. <laughs> you know, Brother David Okamoto. Why? You know, when you think of it, the finding of David was in itself miraculous. It's not like God didn't know that there are faults in the man's character. In fact, God went through the entire family and said, is there, is there another one? And the father was kind of surprised. Yeah, yeah, I have a little one who's tending the sheep. And sure enough, you know, the prophet Samuel was guided to that person, you know. And we know about David. We know about his life. We, 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 we know about his sins. But what is it about him that, first of all, Jesus called him the, the great king. And secondly, he's considered to be a man after God's own heart. To 
to be out to be someone who has that capacity to seek God, the heart of God, means that you're a person who, when you see your sin, your tears will flow like a river, because because you 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 know you have such a connection with the Creator and s- such a sense of remorse. You know, you're not a, a lukewarm character. You're a person who is either hot or cold. And when it came to repentance, David sin- was his sincerity was of high magnitude. That kind of quality is one of the qualities that we would want to emulate as as uh, 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 Christians, as a transparent quality in us. When we perceive our sins, are we prepared to to justify it or, or minimize it? Or do we perceive it as such an affront such a painful act towards our creator that that our repentful cry is 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 moves the heart of god moves the heart of god that's the quality that god is seeking in each and every one of his children and so we look at the examples of these men and yet at the same time we can say well yeah you know I'm I'm like David in some respects. I have those faults, you know, but do I have the heart that seeks after God's own heart? How do I pray to achieve that level of uh, transparency? When we go to the scriptures and we read uh, Galatians uh, 5, uh, verses 13 to 25, Again, not to prolong anything, you're familiar, many of you, with the fruits of the Spirit. Those are qualities that are fruits. A fruit happens, a fruit doesn't just come out of a tree immediately. It's only after the tree has grown, has developed, has weathered the storms that those fruits begin to manifest Uh, At first, they may be a little ripe, but eventually they mature. So are we the kinds of people who have the patience to pursue that way of life such that those fruits can mature in us? For what purpose? For what purpose? Always go back to purpose so that we can be the people who bring the deepest joy to God, because God is looking for relationship. But what beings can give God the deepest level of relationship? It's not angels. It's not the animals. It's human beings. Because God infused in human beings certain qualities that are like him quality of love, the quality to become parents, the quality to love one's neighbor as oneself. And he gives you one that's somewhere <laughs> very close to you, your spouse, because they'll bring out stuff in you that even your brothers and sisters uh, 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 never saw or, or weren't of the mindset to pick up. But your, your spouse will. For what, for what purpose, though? For the purpose of you rounding yourself out and becoming a man who can truly love the Lord as creator and being grateful for what you've been given and to love your neighbor. And, of course, your neighbor, or certainly your spouse, but, of course, your, your society, your environment, your, 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 your relatives, all of these people, uh, even, even, even the stranger, even the stranger, right? I mean, we know that because Jesus gave us the example of that, the, the, the Samaritan. You know, Jesus laid out the, the story first and then asked them, well, who, 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 who was this man's neighbor? You see, was it that priest? Was it that Levite? Or was it 
that person who in society you tend not to want to be around. And yet he was the one who bound your wounds and was willing to pay for your care. You see, again, what, what is the quality that uh, the Lord is looking for? These are the qualities of transparency in our way of life that will prepare us that will prepare us to become the true objects of God. It's not just about, you know, I, I live well, I live good, I'm honest, I'm sincere. Why? God is building a world. God is seeking what he desired from the very beginning. That's what the beginning point of this, uh, this gathering was about, restoration. Restoration means to undo the damage, but also after that is done to take it to where it was supposed to be from the very beginning. So in a way, we're breaking new ground with the guidance of Christ. We're breaking new ground because there are places that humankind has not yet touched base. This is the first time. You know, we're learning to be parents in ways that were not established before. God-centered parents. And I'm, I'm, I'm of the view that this is, this is the time that this, 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 this reality will come into play. Because I'm looking around my environment and I'm seeing things manifesting in society whose intention is to destroy the very structure that God intended to redefine the very structure from the very beginning. And it's taken a hold that has never, I think in society in the 6,000 years of human history, arrived at that level, being supported by powerful forces, by powerful nations. So we have to ask ourselves, what is God seeking? God is seeking true human beings, transparent human beings who can show what the fundamental purpose of his creation was. And so I'm going to end with this statement. I believe that the purpose of transparent Christian living is not something that we do just for the sake of being the light of the world. Indeed, God, Jesus called us to be the light, but the purpose of being the light is to draw others. So just as Jesus said, we are the light of the world, we are to put on the character of Christ that we too, in this earthly existence, not in the hereafter, right here, can draw men unto him and through him to the creator, to the parent, to the father, to the mother. Number two, to become the proper citizens who can be the true love objects of God, to be transparent. You know, Father Moon has a way of of putting it, he, he, he talked, Father Moon would say high noon settlement, high noon. What happens at high noon? You know, if the sun is right centered above you, what is it that doesn't show? Shadow, you have no shadow. You know, if shadow is darkness, if it represents darkness, if it represents an angle and you are living a life of no shadow, it means that you're clean. You're clear. That's the kind of object that God is seeking. That's the kind of person. In fact, that's the kind of person who, who can truly have the deepest relationship with God. And the beauty of it is that it's, not, it's, it's, it's a very natural thing once it's established. It's not like you have to keep like trying and trying and trying. Once it clicks, and becomes your nature, your character, it's, it's, it's the norm. 
It's like the character of Jesus. You know, Jesus was a being who had his own will, but when it came to relationship with his father, there was no no struggle, you know, well, I want to do my thing, but, you know, his, his will was always desiring to serve God's will because he knew what God's original intention is. But if it takes this and it takes that in order to move something forward, I am willing, I am ready. I'm not in struggle. My mind is not saying I want to go this way and my body saying, no, I want to go that way. Jesus was not such a person. We are to become like that. And once we are like that, the beauty of it is it's not a, it's not a fight. You know, you're not, you're, you're not struggling like you're hanging you're hanging on, on, on you, you made it to the top of a building, but somehow you're still hanging there. And if you let go, uh, you know, you're going to fall. Now, once you're enraptured in that love, once you're enraptured in that quality of relationship, nothing can take you away. Satan can't take you away because Satan doesn't have that level of love, that capacity of love, you know. So we're to become such people. And lastly, it says to become the proper citizens, yes, who are living that 90 degree no shadow life. And lastly, and this one is the one that all of us, whether in this life or in the life to come, it's going to happen. It's destined to happen to become the qualified citizens who can inhabit and who will inhabit the promise of chapter 21 of Revelation, the New Jerusalem. What is the New Jerusalem? The New Jerusalem, we can say, is the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the way of life that God originally intended. You know, a friend of mine once said, you know, he said it, and there was some truth in what he said. He said, you know, if, if, God, if God were to manifest on earth right now, externally speaking, externally speaking, the environment of the kingdom, beautiful, everything being beautiful, would you right now, in the state that you are in, resonate with that environment? You know, he... he what he was essentially saying is, look, you know, we've got, to, we've got to be the people who are so developed that even if the environment is not yet there, within you, within your character, it already is established. Jesus was such a man. His environment certainly was entirely largely against him at the time of his earthly ministry. But truly, he was a man qualified to be a citizen of the New Jerusalem. But God is looking for citizens, men and women, who can honor him, love him, honor one another, be in relationship with one another, understand the nature of making harmony. That's the purpose of transparent Christian living. It's to prepare us to become citizens of the kingdom. I'll end with this. It was, uh, I was driving down, uh, I think it was Bedford Avenue in Brooklyn, uh, and I turned on Sterling Street, and there was a little church there, and uh, they had a little statement. It was nothing, no big church, just a small corner church, you know, and he said, our ministry, our ministry is to build up the individuals who will build and establish the kingdom. So, you know, I was very moved by that statement. You know, I, I felt, wow, you know, there's, there's a point of truth. The point being that 
the kingdom begins with us as individuals. And as we are built up and we built up our families, we build up our societies, we learn how to truly, truly become transparent and strong spiritually and loving beyond our present capacities, then we're becoming the citizens who will inhabit the new Jerusalem. So thank you, pastors. Thank you very much for uh, listening. And I, I pray that uh, uh, the little bit that I could uh, share with you today can be uh, an inspiration for further growth. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless yes. you. Uh, Reverend Edna, would you mind to offer the short prayer? Yes. A precious God, you who are our heavenly parent, we give thanks at this time. We're grateful for those who were present, who are present today. Those who couldn't make it, we understand. You know, they, it's not that they chose not to, but on this earth sometimes we just can't split ourselves up in two and three. So we have to be in places that we've committed to or other situations just rise up that take up our time. But we know in spirit, all our brothers and sisters are present here. So we give thanks and pray that the words that we share today can become an inspiration, can be an education, can give us really the hope. You know, we're not living for just today. We're growing, we're developing, Lord, that we might become the people who, 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 who you know, whether it is right here on this earth or as we are trans transported via death, to our, our new life in the spirit that we harmonize with you. There's not a distance between us and you. That's, that's, that's the goal. That's the hope. You know, you want, you want to, let, let, don't, don't, don't let our hearts be satisfied with a seven when you desire us to be a 10. We know it's not always easy. We know and understand that. And we are grateful for your long-suffering patience with us. But ultimately, we want to desire your, we want to fulfill your desire. We want to, 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 to be the beings who fulfill everything that our, uh, our forebears desire. For even in the book of Hebrews, it says that what they hoped would depend on us at this time. So we stand on their shoulders, but in the fulfillment of your will, we pray that the blessing be not just ours, but the unfulfilled hopes of all the saints who preceded us and gave us a platform to stand on. So we're grateful and we're thankful at this moment, at this time, as we lift these words up and offer it on the altar of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend, yeah. Reverend Edna. So it's, uh, Thank you. Such a deep, deep and wide and uh, so wise. And uh, so I'm so grateful, especially uh, you mentioned about uh, David and uh, <laughs> uh, the the point about transparency that that he he had a uh, you know struggle and sin nature and uh, but uh, he has to pay a heavy price for what what sin he committed but he repented but uh, when I looked at the Bible Bible is such an amazing amazing book that so transparent. Yes. So transparent. Everything, everything in our life, in the history, is in the Bible. Whether it's so ugly and so bad, so sinful, but also the so holy and so, um, you know, so glorious, glorious, amazing. So everything there in the Bible. So, so it's so, so grateful that this message of transparency and uh, uh, the purpose is so clear, clearly stated today. And uh, so I'd like to hear from the sound of the uh, today's participant, uh, listeners, and uh, just even the, a few words, and that would be very helpful for everybody to uh, get something. 
inspiration. And uh, we have some uh, uh, new person. And if you feel that, you know, this is a kind of a platform, uh, op uh, very open, you know, mm -hmm. the, not, don't have to be, a, you know, amazing speaker or anything, but just to be transparent and uh, to be just be I, uh, the way you are, support your own <laughs> uh, life and uh, in a spiritual life, spiritual way, not the physical way. Uh, so that uh, we can, we may all you know, learn how God is working in our life and uh, uh, to fulfill its purpose. Uh, Reverend Holmes, uh, would you like to make a, uh, just some comment? Yeah, yeah, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank God for the opportunity to hear Pastor Edner uh, preach, teach. It, it is a cause of self-examination. Take a look at ourselves in the light of God's countenance and to see how we are how we are truly walking. There's an old saying that says, fix me, Jesus, fix me right. Mm. That death might not come to my house tonight. I want to wear a story crown one day. So it's caused us to be examining ourselves, see where we are in the faith, and make necessary changes according to God's word, be in alignment with God's purposes, His will for our lives. Thank you, Reverend Edner, for that that uh, provoking for to provoke us to think more and think more, think about who we are. Where, where, where we are with God, where God would have us to be. So I thank God for the message this afternoon. Good evening, uh, Holmes. Thank you. Also, uh, we look, we look forward to hearing from from you next next Saturday and at your church. <laughs> thank you, thank you uh, Holmes. And, uh, Reverend Holmes will be speaking on uh, the power of prayer in sustaining the church. Yes. That's a tough topic. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give my time to Reverend Edner next week. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, uh, Reverend Garvan? Is that to make a comment? Short comment? Yeah. Well, yes, thank you very much. Uh, Reverend Edner, uh, you uh, reinforced in me uh, total faith in God, how God works, speaks through you. Today, I really appreciate your message and your preparedness. I think you put the double P. You put the, you put the prayer and you put the preparation behind your presentation. I appreciate your emphasis on uh, when you went into, especially Matthew, and uh, you went into the, 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 the Sermon on the Mount, and you went and shared with us the blessedness of people who are righteous. And I felt the transparency issue is very important because it hits me today about... Uh, that of good and evil, day uh, and, and and day and night, and light and darkness. So in, in the scriptures, I'm grateful for the hour of restoration where we can put into our minds forefront in our forward of our mind, and whatever goes into our mind comes from our heart. And I felt that the purification of your message was uh, very vital and helped me to re settle more in the heavenly words of Jesus Christ. You know, it's like, for instance, it, it, you know, there seems to be in this Romans, in the book of Romans, there seems to be something about inclusion and exclusion, about the Jews and the Gentiles, and about this, about missing the point about, is it food, and um, is it, uh, you know, what exactly it says here uh, in, in the scriptures in 14, and it says um, here that uh, 17, 1417, for the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And I felt your message just really, just really just kept right on that line to me and helped me understand more that it's it's really there's, I think that this time, I think that Paul was talking here about an issue about envy and even between, not just between the fleshly life, but also between churches, between religions. And, um, and groups of people, and he came with a message. Let's get it back online, folks. Mm. That repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I really felt that, um, uh, you know, when you talked about no shadows, 
I understand that. You know, it's like, you know, you know, what are you, do you have anything that you can uh, not be proud of? You know, and, uh, you know, it's like, I know sometimes, you know, when I'm, when I'm in, in the presence of someone very prayerful, I know that they can know before I even speak what's on my mind. Yeah. And I feel very much as dealing with a, a parent and a child, child comes to the parent. Sometimes when the kids come home from school, you can say to the child, uh, you, you ask them to be kindly, you know, how was your day? But you know already what the, how their day was because you can read their mind. God can read my mind. Before I even pray, he knows what's on my mind. And I think very much is uh, uh, your, your presentation would remain mindful, mindful of God's mind. We given me that mindset of God. I really felt it was very precious. And I want to thank you very much because I think that this week when we had the ashes that came from Canada, that darkness hit New York. New York was the most polluted, the most contaminated uh, city in um, the world, in the world with these ashes. It not only got into uh, our, uh, our uh, body, and, but it get, gets into our blood. Just like we have to understand the Adam and Eve fall, that that was the contamination, a, a, a spiritual abomination where we sinfully cut off our relationship of love from God. And I think the only way now is today we were able to purify our mind, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, everything, by hearing the word of God that you gave me. And I, I thank you very much because you must love in order to, to, to really, you know, like Jesus. Jesus did not come to subjugate, to judge the world. In John 3, 16, God so sent his only begotten son to not to judge the world, condemn the world, but to love the world. And love is the bottom line. Pure, pure love. And that's transparent. Thank you very much, Reverend Ed. Mm, thank you. Give glory to God. Amen. Uh, uh, Pastor Morris, De De Deborah Morris, uh, thank you for coming. And uh, you know you are so busy and uh, but you are really trying hard <laughs> to come to our platform uh would you like to give us uh, just uh, uh some comment pastor morris okay to god be the glory thank you i don't want to keep you too much longer but i do thank god for the word God for transparency because that's how we live and that's how we'll be able to draw others to Christ he said let our light so shine before men that mm -hmm. we that they may know and see who God truly is in us paraphrasing it Amen. who he is in us mm -hmm. and that our father in heaven will be glorified through it all so if we continue to just be transparent allow the glory of God to just utilize us and lead and guide us we'll be able to do exactly what God had um, planned for us. And I just thank you for the word. Thank you how you have really brought it out. And like it was already stated, all the study and to pull the scriptures together just to help us in these times, because we all need it, not just the people that we congregate, uh, that congregate under our voices, but also for pastors that we could continue to continually be built up. God bless you so oh, much and thank yeah. you. Thank you very Blessings, much. Pastor. Thank you. God bless. God bless you. Uh, Reverend uh, Bishop Wakas, I would like to make uh, some comments from Pakistan. Thank you very much. Very, very good evening from Pakistan to the very beautiful, blessful message to our brother. So, Roman. Chapter 13, verse 11 to 12 and 14. The apostle now gives a reason for enforcing this and a then duties upon his readers. The end of the word itself is near. St. Paul, like the other apostles, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, Revelation chapter 
22nd, verse 20, and DTC. Certainly, believe that the Russia on second coming of Christ was near at hand. This was in stick according with the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 32, and reserved naturally from the peculiar from of the Jews Mishnah expectation a great song had been given to the disciples by the crucifixion of him whom they thought to the Messiah and though they begin to recover from this as soon as they were convinced of his resurrection, they yet could not uh, reconcile themselves to it entirely. The humiliation of the cross was still a stumbling block of them, taken all one, but falling back upon another portion of their belief, they look to see it supplemented and its shameful sight cancelled by a second coming in power and great glory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cancelled by a second coming in power and great glory, their previous expectation, which as they were, led them to regard this as part of the one manifestation of the Messiah. And they did not expect to see a long inter interval of time interposed. Thank you very much. May God bless all of you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is the first time, uh, Minister Hai. Would you like to make just uh, uh, what what you thought, what you felt about this uh, our restoration? And uh, wish you, you can come uh, as many times you yeah. can. Well. Um, I want to first off thank Reverend Edner for uh, sending the link. It was very, very greatly appreciated. Um, I just wanted to say what resonated with me um, is his mention of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, you know, he did forget to mention that I am uh, the director of Manhattan the Church's Global Health Ministry. But that's okay, because uh, it's not about glorifying me, it's about glorifying God. So, um, basically, Sermon on the Mount, where he mentioned that, uh, you know, love your uh, enemy, you know, pray for your enemy, you know, um, Reverend Edner uh, did mention that I am... Uh, within the healthcare profession as an emergency medical technician. And uh, I was on duty uh, the day of 9-11, not here in the city, but upstate. And we were put on standby uh, for response uh, down to the city. Um, and I had a problem, you know, with... Ever since 9-11, uh, the Muslim uh, faith, you know, has received a lot of anger and criticism over 9-11. And from my research of it and everything, uh, the Muslim faith itself is a peace-loving religion. You know, it's just a few uh, radicals who take it too far. And actually, you know, uh, this afternoon... You know, I made arrangements to speak with an iman, 
uh, at our local mosque here in Brooklyn, you know, uh, to learn even more about the Muslim religion and hopefully get over, you know, this, um, I don't want to say hatred, but this, um, uh, this aversion, you know, to the Muslim religion. You know, um, so I will be uh, meeting with this imam, uh, this imam tomorrow, you know, so please pray for me for that. Okay. You know, um, and as far as the global health mission, just to do a little quick plug with that, we are looking for other churches um, and uh, especially churches that have uh, early admissions uh, in their uh, uh within their congregation to partner with. And if anybody's interested, uh, you can get a hold of either uh, Edner, uh, Edner or myself, and I will leave my contact info in the comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Well, it's very really true, practicing the word of Jesus, love your enemy, is a, uh, in a practical sense, that uh, what you're doing is exactly like that. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, uh, Reverend Bruce. Uh, thank you for your uh, uh, presentation today at the uh, uh, marriage blessing rededication ceremony. And uh, Reverend Bruce, you have you, want, you have some comment today? Mm. Uh, just, I, yeah. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Reverend Edner. It was a great. I always. Um, I really enjoyed listening to you because, uh, as the pastor, or one of the pastors of the church uh, was sharing today, or a minister was sharing, sometimes our we have to get practical. Our our faith and religion has to get more on the practical side. You know. You know. And and. Uh, so it's, yeah, we need balance as, as people of God, because God is balanced. You know, God, God is the same creator that created the universe. And, uh, you know, all the laws and everything in this, in this whole universe, I mean, is, you know, and, but when you said, you know, it's interesting. I mean, when, when you mentioned that even God would want his children to be better than him, that, you know, these are, these are interesting, you know, thoughts. I mean, you know, and you, like you said, where do we, where do we get those things from? Why, why, you know, it, it, God created us in his image and likeness. So those kinds of things that we might in one sense say, you know, no, this is not the God I serve. You know, God is beyond all this stuff. But, but on the other hand, where do we get these feelings? Where do we get, and they're universal. They're like, you know, whether we're Christian or Jewish or Muslim or whatever, we, every parent wants their child. I mean, a good parent wants their child to be greater than them, you know. So this universal fact in us must come from God. And uh, so I love the way that, you, you know, through the deductive method, we can learn, you know, as in Romans 1.20, it said ever since this, you know, creation, the his power and authority is made himself is very clearly seen in the things that he made so if we study human beings then we can begin to see maybe you know we we don't have we put god in a box and on a pedestal that isn't really where god wants to be and maybe it's not the real god you know the heart of god so so i love your sermons that really bring heaven down to earth and um and uh, I think it's, um, you know, I oftentimes think, you know, Jesus said, I speak to you in symbols and parables. Some say, I'll tell you plainly of the Father. And, you know, are we ready to hear plainly from the Father? I mean, can we really, can, are we, you know, we, are, we must be ready because we're hearing words that are, hmm. that are challenging our theologies and our understanding. Um, you know, as many of you know, I come from a Jewish background and, and certainly, you know, Jesus challenged, as you mentioned, Reverend Edner, um, you know, just those laws, you know, those laws that, that, that many people thought that was it. That was the only truth. You know, there is no other truth. 
And so I think, you know, if there's, it's like we have to be prepared for new wine. We have to be prepared. We have to be open for new wine or we'll never have a chance to really participate in what God is trying to do in the 21st century. And uh, so anyway, thank you for uh, your message today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Gladden, as always. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have. Uh, I think it's uh, Jen- Jennifer, uh, uh, Minister Jennifer, Reverend Jennifer. I think she's the Galaxy A32, but I could be wrong. <laughs> okay, oh, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. We just want to give honor to God. Um, And I just want to say more grace upon your ministry, Reverend Edna. I just love to be to, as Pastor Gabriel has opened up the floor, he laid the foundation, then you start laying the blocks, start the building. Mm -hmm. And that is great. The word today was powerful. You do some great digging and searching, and you bring the word so open and so transparent. For a, and a lot, we get. A, I gather a lot from it, and um, especially when you talk about the sermon and the mountain, and when you talk about Christian to be how it's supposed to be transparent. I am really applauded by those words because um, nowadays leaders, there are very few who are blood washed and rooted in Christ are even are really transparent. Some of them have so much baggage behind them. Mm. And so because of that, you see, they dilute the word of God. And so they try to prick it up, bringing in different, different stuff like, you know, prosperity, how to build church with money and stuff like that. They're not transparent. But I'm glad that there are still souls that are out there reaching out for the truth and to spread the truth as, um, you know, we're no more drinking from the bottle. We are eating hard food now, so we are receiving more and more. And this is our frustration. I just pray for more grace upon our Reverend um, um, Gabriel and the Brother David and his wife who started this, our frustration. We just thank God for these people. We just pray God strength and grace upon them continually because this is powerful because it doesn't matter how many college we go to there are so many things we need to learn and so we get we gather from one another you know and this is how we we are able to build our ministry by learning from each other Mm. and so i thank god for your ministry upon your life and i pray for more grace and i pray that god will increase knowledge wisdom and understanding more in his logo for you my dear brother in the name of jesus amen Amen. thank you you're so, welcome. Yeah, so your world is so encouraging and uh, encourage us to keep going. You know, no matter what happens, mm. we'll be here uh, every Sunday at 5 p.m. Reverend Gabriel, uh, mm. uh, give us your uh, mm-hmm. final remarks and uh, closing us with the prayer. Reverend Gabriel, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, again, want to appreciate her. Uh, our own Reverend Edna, Lord bless you, sir. Thank you. More, more anointing upon your life and ministry in Jesus' name. You know, one thing about our restoration, just like, just like what Reverend Galvan uh, remarked, is to encourage ourselves. <coughs> where, where we have, we still, is to encourage ourselves to, you know, ministries complementing, complement one another. You know, uh, last week, somebody was there. You, we gained something. Today, again, it's an addition. But what I will plead with us is that let's teach our members to some of these things. We can take some of these topics to, to our churches and minister on needs. You know? Uh, so I want to appreciate you, sir. God bless you richly in Jesus' name. You mentioned a character in the Bible, which is David. Not David Akamoto, but the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but David, you know, David has a character. And what is that character? 
you know, he knows when he does wrong. And he will quickly do, and do what? Repent. And that is why at the end of the day, the Bible says, is the man after God's own heart. If the man after God's own heart. That's, an, that's a big example for all of us as ministers to learn. It's a big example for us to learn. David will always, you know, immediately commits, he go back. Look at when he commits with Uriah, uh, Uriah's wife. And he paid dearly for it. And at the end, what did he do? He apologized. He, he, he repented. He did not go and begin to argue. He did not go and begin to justify himself. But today, what do we see? We justify ourselves. Even when we know that what we are doing is wrong. We justify ourselves. David did not claim perfection. And at the end of the day, we saw the remark that happened concerning his life. And then we saw his relationship with Jonathan. He was so what? He was so transparent. Jonathan was so transparent with David. Jonathan was, was so transparent with David. And that takes me to Genesis chapter 2, verse 24-25. Where is it? For this reason, a man shall leave his wife and cleave together. Then in verse 25, and they will become one. Then in verse 25, say, the two of them were together and they were naked. That word nakedness means transparency. As a minister, we must be transparent with our spouse. The wife must be transparent with the husband. The husband must be transparent with the wife. You know, why am I pleading that for us to take this thing back to our churches also is that if you look at the churches today, you see divorce here and here. And one of the one of the problem of divorce here and here is because there's no transparency, either from the point of the husband or the point of the wife. So God will help us. God will help us. He's still talking about restoration because every God is bringing us together here to learn this thing and transport it back to our bigger churches and let the people know that for us we are from a different angle. This thing must just go. Transparency is one thing that makes is the hallmark of Christianity. Transparency in our relationship, transparency in, in our homes, transparency with our children. And we are the embodiment of transparency because we are the, the church staff from our homes. When we are transparent in our homes, it will affect our children. From there, it will affect the society and then at large, and all to the glory of Almighty God in Jesus' name. So once again, uh, Reverend Edna, thank you very much. God bless you richly. You know, we cannot but continue to listen to you. Hallelujah. And God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Bless you. Thank you Pastor very much. Gabriel, sir. thank you. And, thank you. And thank God for Reverend Galvan. God bless you, sir. Uh, Bishop Walkers, all the way from Pakistan. Thank We're happy you. to see you. We did not see your wife today. Hallelujah. Extend our greetings to her. God bless you. And our very own Pastor Jenny, all the way from Florida. And our Reverend Edna, ah, Reverend Bruce, hallelujah, the only Jewish among us. God bless <laughs> us. <laughs> we want more Jewish. <laughs> please bring more Jewish, please. <laughs> Let's see more, more, more of the Jewish among us. God bless us. Sir. I'm very grateful. And I come out of God bless you. And our mommy, mommy Morris, Deborah, God bless you, ma. God bless you, ma. God bless you. I'm very grateful for every one of us that we are here today. Please, let's make it again next Sunday. Uh, by the grace of God, another powerful speaker will be coming next Sunday. You will agree with me that what we had today is highly, is highly, highly, highly anointed, more than that we had last Sunday, you know. And I can assure you next Sunday we are going to hear much, much, much better. So don't let us miss next Sunday. And let's encourage some of our leaders to always be part of the hour restoration. And then please, if you are in New York, join on Saturday, 17th of June. The time is 10 a.m. at St. Thomas A.M.E. Zion Church in Avestro. Prayer Summit is coming up there. Hallelujah. And then the topic is the future of the church. Bishop McKenzie will be ministering, and then 
uh, Reverend Holmes, who will be ministering on the power of prayer in sustaining the church. The power of prayer in sustaining the church. <clears throat> God is taking us to another level, another level, another level. This is part one. Uh, this is series one. Let me put it there. This is series one of uh, the future of the church. So please don't miss it and try to register. Registration is just $20. Very chicken change. Hallelujah. And if you cannot, encourage your leaders to also, also be part of this great move of God in our midst. God bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the adoration for that which you have done for us today. Thank you, Lord, for the word that we have had. Father, I pray grace to be doers of your word. Release unto us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray as your servant, O Lord, make us an embodiment of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we have been learning about transparency. Father, I pray, Lord, give us the grace to be transparent in everything we do, in our relationship with our spouse, with our children, with our church members, O Lord. Father, now help us, O Lord, that at the end of the day, we shall all rapture with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you because of the mighty God. Thank you, O Lord, for your son, our elder, Edna, our reverend Edna, that we have used, O Lord. Much has gone on, Father. I pray you will replenish him back with more unction to function in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, take all them because of the mighty God. Thank you, Lord, for our brother that is coming for the first time. Father, he will be going to see the Imam tomorrow. Go before him, O Lord. To that place in Jesus' name. That when he gets there, Father, you will have prepared the ground for him. And they will come back with testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, this brand new week, O Lord, protect our going out, our coming in. Grant us favor, O Lord. Grant us divine preservation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take out the every person, mighty God. Father, King of King, Lord of Lord, it's all about you, not about any man. Take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name, I do pray. And until we meet again next Sunday, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and our sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us now forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall all dwell us of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 The Lord. Amen. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, sirs. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mommy Morris. I will okay, I will text you. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother Phil. Okay, Reverend Thank you, Reverend Bruce. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Reverend Gabriel. Thank you, Reverend Gabriel. Thank you, sir. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Thank you, brother David. Wish you the best of the new week. God bless you. Bishop Walkers, Sister Jenny. God bless you, everyone. Love you also. Love you, Reverend Holmes. Yes, love you. Hey. Love you. <laughs> God bless you, Reverend Holmes.